name of the member so elected to the committee. Thank you. Honorable Jawahar Sarkarji. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And through you, I thank the minister for being present to listen to our vote. This is a subject that affects all of us. But where the state of West Bengal is concerned, there were many other issues also we would have liked to raise. We have been raising like the federal structure, like Northeast, including Meghalaya, unemployment, price rise, central agencies being misused, and the border, of, uh, the border issues with China. But since you have given me this chance of speaking on this, I will... Please, 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 the special issue of climate change affects the coastal states of India the most. As you know, the immediate effect is the rise in sea levels. One of the most immediate effects is a rise in sea levels, and we have been hearing of projections of apocalypse for the last 20 years, 25 years. And the way we are proceeding, much of it might come to be true. We see the effects of it in the Sundarbans. The Sundarban is a very special area, which is the world's uh, most, uh, uh, apart from being a world environmental site, a world heritage site, it is one of the great examples of how nature controls uh, the sea. And that Sundarban today is gravely threatened by the dissipations of the ocean, which is again caused by climate change. At periodic intervals, the Bay of Bengal is subjected to cyclones of a type that only two other zones in the world receive the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. coast and the Philippines. We are ravaged, and that means today Tamil Nadu has been ravaged, tomorrow Andhra will be ravaged, Odisha has been ravaged, and the Bay of Bengal, Bengal and Bangladesh pull the cyclone like a magnet. But nevertheless, what stops us, what stops the sea from invading Bengal is the mangrove plantation that we have. And on the mangrove plantation, we do not find the seriousness we require. 10, 11 years ago, we had Alia that left behind a, a super cyclone. Until today, we have not received payment for them. We have pleaded again and again this throughout this year that we need to replant mangrove plantation saplings. We need to grow that mangrove forest more. No reply. The rural development schemes that are the minimum that we expected did not come through. After that, sir, I would like to draw your attention to the deadly impact on crops. Sir, this one will be common to you, to me, and to all of us. You know what happened with this super heat this year, from the middle of April. The wheat crop got parched, shriveled up, and the procurement has been about 5% less. Wheat at 5% less than last year, I think it's about 4.5% less than last year, I raised this issue again and again, is a very dangerous symbol. <coughs> After that followed, the heat wave was followed by delayed monsoons. West Bengal is a victim of this delayed monsoon, like many other states. But what happens in a delayed monsoon for the paddy crop is that you are unable to cultivate it at the time that nature has given and you are forced to contract your cultivation period from a good 120-day crop to an 80-day crop, to an 85-day crop, and productivity comes down. This is all an effect of cycl so the, the climate change, and we better realize that we are all contributing to it. That's the worst part of it. We can't blame the elements of nature all the time. Our food stocks, I had mentioned to the Honorable Food Minister, and he told us quite emphatically that it is very satisfactory. I have reasons to believe that's not as satisfactory because the procurement of Harif and the yield of Rabi is sensitive enough to worry. Sensitive. This is a national problem, so we need not uh, score points on each other. The World Bank report that has come out 
Uh, one of the World Bank reports that have come out, uh, which is uh, the, uh, the Honorable Minister, I'm sure, knows about it, climate and investment opportunities, etc., paints a picture that is very, very dangerous. New Delhi had 46 degrees, 47 degrees in, in, in April, which was unprecedented. We have gone through extraordinary spikes in temperature, but the World Bank predicts that this is only child's play. This is only child's play. Through the G20 Climate Risk Atlas, they have said that we, heat waves across India were likely to last 25 times longer by 36. Many of us hope to live till 36. So by 36, by 30, 36, uh, not me, I mean, I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking Imran. So, we were like, likely to la last for 25 times more. I would beseech to the minister that even if half the figure is true, it's given by the JT climate report, half the, world, half the report is true, what are we doing about it? Carbon emissions remain extremely high, and the IPCC's worst case scenario puts India at one of the highest risk countries. We know all about it. We know all about it. Up to 75% of our workforce, which is 380 million people, are exposed to what we call uh, heat-exposed labor. Uh, my friend uh, Ami Yagrink just spoke about it. This heat-exposed labor. Now, the point is, India has also the additional, uh, additional uh, disadvantage of being, I mean, disadvantage from this point of view, from generating one of the highest humidities in the world being a tropical climate. So it makes us worse than many others. The bottom line is that they say that about 5% of India's GDP is at risk. Will somebody please clarify, is 5% of India's GDP at risk? We talk of 6% and 7% and quarrel for seven months. Whether it be 7% or 7.1%. Please, please, please. But 5% if it comes to the beach, 2%. So, we need to So, we need to understand that we have to go through certain cold chain facilities, and the cold chain facilities hardly cover 5%. But without these cold chain facilities, our pharmaceuticals and vaccines would be destroyed. Many of our high value crops would be destroyed. And one disruption, thanks to a heat wave, means a perishment. What are the figures? 20% we have lost, they said that in COVID-19, India lost approximately 20% of temperature-sensitive medical products and 25% of the vaccines were destroyed due to broken cold chains. So these are, we need, I am, pay, I am putting forward this picture, it's known very well by the minister, but the response is what we see. Now I'm coming to the, uh, that part of it. The, there are these reports about how many, how this year's heat wave has affected. Only the first nine months, we have lost 2,775 lives. We have affected 1.8 million hectares of crop area. More than 4 lakh houses have been affected. But chali, India recorded extreme weather events for 241, 241 days. Out of 273 days, this year, we are not talking of tomorrow or day after, we are talking of this year, we have gone through extreme weather events for 241 out of 273 days, out of which Madhya Pradesh went through the worst, Himachal and Assam followed. That this is what we are going through. But more than this, the cause of alarm that we have on this side of the house is that there is a dualism in the government. I can't use the word hypocrisy. It may be a little too hard. There's a dualism in government policy that while there is an energy for development, while there are certain energies even for environment, which I don't deny, there are at the same time events like 130 square kilometers of the most ecologically fragile region of the great Nicobar Islands being put to slaughter put to slaughter and no one is bothered about it. So we have 
these what I call the erratic movements. You are doing something about the environment here. I must say the minister has done an excellent job in Sharm El Sheikh by getting the Western countries at least to agree to India's proposal. I say they go good about it. But at the same time, his ministry is giving licenses. His ministry is permitting the slaughter of forest land. The most ecologically fragile Himalayas are being put in under some sort of tourism. So these, you cannot have a dualism. You cannot use your left hand and right hand to negate each other. That is what's going on. If we make a list of the number of deviations that this ministry has made in the last five, seven years on the issue of environment, that would call for a special discussion and I would Thank you. It. Thank you, Jawar Sarkar. Sir, I am moving to conclude, I would just please, say... Please, you have already taken I two minutes just more. Use please, two more please, minutes. Conclude. please conclude. Sir, these are... I have paint, uh, mentioned a uh, lot of doom figures, but I'd say that fossil fuels that are the root cause of it are just about 170 years old. Much of the developed world used it 170 years ago, 150 years ago, and we in the underdeveloped part of the world at that point of time used it for 100 years. It is not the end of infinity. This, we are inviting the next ice age. The last ice age came about 11,700 years, and we are hastening the process towards the next ice age. That's the least I can say. But I am glad that at least please, please, Sheikh, George, Sheikh, 27, please, you please. could come to a common I'm, I'm calling other speaker now. System. Please, please. And please. I would submit, please. sir, that special fiscal measures be introduced Thank if you. you want to build up the fund. Thank special you. Special taxation measures. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay Singh. Thank you. Manya Sanjay Thank you. Singh. Thank you, sir.